another edition of Pitch Brand Talk. I'm really glad today to have with me Rohit Haseen. He's the president of Retail Liabilities Product and the chief marketing officer at Kotak Mahindra Bank. As we know, Kotak is one bank which is known for its memorable advertising. So Rohit, welcome to Pitch Brand Talk. Thank you, Simran. Delighted to be here with you today. Rohit, let's just start a little bit with your background. You come with your prior experience to joining Kotak with was with the FMCG sector. And then now you've moved to the BF, the BFSI space. So are there any things that you had to unlearn and then learn again or vice versa? Uh, yeah, so the BFSI space is a very exciting space to, to be in. Uh, you know, a lot of action, a lot of innovation uh, happening here. But for me, one thing which which uh, I, I really had to, uh, it's not about unlearning and learning. It was more about trying to drive a culture of, of, of building consumer centricity at, at, at Kotak. Uh, and I, I realized when I kind of came here that most of the uh, companies in the BFSI space, banks and, and other institutions, uh, work a lot from what I call the demand uh, supply side of thinking, which is, you know, you build a product, look at the features, and then you go and find a consumer who can buy it. Uh, while what I had learned in the last 25 years of being uh, you know, an FMCG company was how do I really start with the consumer at the heart of everything we do, identify what are the pain points of the consumers, you know, what are the needs of consumers, and then build the right product and propositions to answer those needs. Uh, when you do that, you build a product which is more relevant, you build a product which is more differentiated, and therefore more likely that the consumer will choose your company's product versus another company's product, your brand versus another company's brand. And that has really been the, the big shift that I have been trying to build at Kotak for the last year or so. Uh, it's very early days. It's it's a journey. Um, and I'm sure as we go along in this journey, we will we will become uh, you know more consumer centric, build propositions uh, which are more relevant to consumers and therefore be able to gain a much higher share of the market than what we have to. Uh, you kind of preempted my next question because I was going to ask you when you know you've joined at the time when the focus of the customer uh, of the bank is consumer centricity, with a you know with a technology first and a digital first approach. So how has this overall panned out? So uh, you know, for me, digital is I mean, digital is a bit of a uh, ubiquitous word. You know, so you really have to. Mm -hmm. Divide that into various different use cases. There is an element of uh, of data which kind of comes, uh, which which is where we use a lot of artificial intelligence uh, to to build more relevant propositions for consumers. I'll talk a bit more in detail about that. And then there's a part of digital where you use digital as a channel to kind of build drive your proposition, build awareness of your proposition on digital as a channel. And then there is digital as uh, a place of acquisition of consumers where you acquire consumers digitally. So, you know, it's, it's, it, it works at all three levels. So let me talk about the first uh, first level about data um, and, and artificial intelligence. You know, so we, what we've really done is to build a very strong capability or in the process of building a very strong data capability in the, the organization. Uh, you know, we've, we've recall what we've built, the data capability and artificial intelligence capability in what I call as the, uh, the, the, the people who compute and people who consume. Uh, and the people who compute are the data scientists who are building algorithms uh, to really look at uh, what are the real needs of consumers, how to really define uh, you know, what are the pain points of consumers. Uh, how, for example, for a person maybe looking at giving credit cards uh, to, to an early job or he's just started to kind of work for the first time. Uh, you know, till now he was really uh, living on a stipend given by his parents who were paying for his fees, living in a hostel, and now suddenly started his first job, so he's got money to spend. How do you define what is whether he's credit worthy or not? What is the right limit to give to this guy? So, so, so we use artificial intelligence to really define, uh, run algorithms and define what is the right credit limit that one can give to this person. From there, you then use uh, data about this person to define what is the right proposition that you build about this person. Uh, is he a person who's looking at deals and offers? Is he a person who's kind of looking at uh, a more emotional way of, of being uh, personified? And you define what is the right value prop for him. Is he a person who's more into shopping? Is he a person more into food? Is he a person more into groceries? Is he a person more into travel? Based on that, you kind of define the right value prop for him on the credit card. 
once you define the right value prop for him then you decide what is the right messaging that you want to give to him once you decide the right messaging based on the emotional insights then you use digital again as a channel to really drive uh, you know efficiency of the channel and artificial intelligence again comes in this place to kind of do that so that's that's the part of of artificial intelligence that you can use uh, or or to really understand the consumer better and drive more relevant propositions for it now once you've decided to make a particular campaign then you know you again go across the conventional channels like televisions and more di- more the digital channels like uh, to build awareness top of the funnel you've got the youtubes and the facebooks and the um, you know instagrams of the world and if you really want to do a bottom of the funnel messaging of conversion then you do performance marketing on digital channels so that's how you really you use digital uh, to really drive awareness of your message and to drive conversion of your message and drive acquisition through that channel so that's like the end to end use case of both data and digital uh, how you really can drive uh, you know better understanding of your consumer and make more relevant propositions and drive more efficiency in in reaching out to them through to the right channel now you spoke about messaging and the various platforms uh, you know you're using but is there a challenge how do you ensure consistent messaging and see uh, and communication and seamless communication across all these platforms because you you know you said performance marketing television digital etc cetera, etc cetera. so is it in that so look it again depends on the uh, the, the the objectives of the campaign you always start with who is the consumer you're trying to reach uh which channel is he most likely to be in and and how do you drive how do you maximize reach at the lowest possible cost uh in the channel where the consumer is with a messaging that is relevant to the consumer so if i'm i'm just make i'm just making it up if i'm going with a very mass message which i believe uh, you know television is is still the most cost effective way of of reaching out to the consumer then i'll have a television heavy plan uh if i believe that my customer can easily be reached only through a very targeted digital plan then i will make a a digital only plan and in many cases i will make a composition of 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 television digital outdoor so the idea is to kind of maximize reach at the lowest possible cost and to drive engagement so therefore the choice of the channel simply comes from these three factors of how do i drive reach frequency at the right cost and in a channel which the consumer likes to watch and therefore have a chance of higher engagement so that's 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 on the top, that's the top of the funnel to build awareness of the brand uh to build uh, love for the brand but then once you kind of build awareness and now you want to directly convert the consumer into taking an action that is where the whole as i call it bottom of the bottom funnel or, or performance marketing kicks in which is strictly done on digital channels you don't do performance marketing above the line and there uh, you know you you have a very clear understanding of who is this consumer where is he you send him a message which has got a call to action message linked to that and the person looks at the message clicks on the call to action is taken into a digital journey onto the bank's uh, you know mobile app or or website and he completes the journey there and we are able to convert him there the measurement is very very, very simple in terms of uh, what is the cost of conversion cac and and the idea there is to really uh, continue to drive cac low and and that's you got to do a combination of both above the line and bottom of the funnel because what above the line does is to build awareness at a very low cost and so it builds a pool of consumers who are aware of your proposition and are possibly interested in the proposition and then when the bottom funnel the performance marketing comes and speaks to those aware interested consumers the likelihood of them converting to you, to 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 your message is that much higher and therefore you got to really spend money on both building the brand awareness and the performance marketing message so that it's, it's all, i almost call it like the ocean must be full with with consumers who are more likely to buy you and when the ocean is full with a lot of consumers your cost of acquisition funnel and and you keep on drying the ocean over the time the cost of acquisition kind of keep on going up so always try the right balance on building awareness above the line and really targeting very very effectively efficiently Uh, through to the bottom funnel on performance marketing. 
this one also comes to your role as you know a marketer you've got over two two and a half decades of experience uh you know how has this role of marketer evolved because you know compared to say even 10 years back artificial you spoke a lot about artificial intelligence tech and technology which wasn't really in play that time so how does how do you how does the role of the marketer so far evolved and the second part of my question is in this process has your engagement with the cto also increased is the cto also do you also go to the cto when it comes to making marketing decisions when especially around technology yeah so uh the biggest change which has happened over the last so many years is the use of data or, or the ability of of companies to get to know more about their customers i think in the past so, uh we did not you know all our understanding of customers would be based on your one on one interactions with consumers you will go and have interviews with consumers you meet consumers uh and based on that you will kind of pick up uh you know the insights and the understanding that you still have to do that because there's nothing uh better than one on one face to face interaction with the consumer but to supplement that what has now happened is and, and i see that especially when i came from a company like levers to a bank the data that you have about your customers in a bank is that the first part data is just just a lot because uh you know right you know everything about your consumer and, and their 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 financial transactions and based on that you can build a persona about about that consumer and based on that persona you can actually uh i come up with certain insights which you believe will help you personalize the right proposition and product for the customer so the biggest shift has been that from broadcasting one product proposition to the whole community you can actually now really tailor and make more relevant and more personalized propositions for for cohorts of consumers that for me is the biggest use of artificial intelligence and data uh so that's that's that, and i think a marketer who doesn't understand how to use data to build more relevant propositions of customers will lose out and i think that is for me the new age marketer must be able that for me is the best use of artificial intelligence data and that is the job of a marketer today to embrace this and be able to really make much much more relevant and customized propositions for customers for this part of the job uh, a marketer engages and i engage a lot with my cto uh, to really build the data capability in the organization very very strongly and i think that for me is 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 the the biggest interaction when it kind of comes in in first building uh, understanding of data about consumers and therefore being able to build propositions the second place is about the bank is about building journeys you know uh, and the, and the second place where i engage a lot with my cto is how do i make the most simplified easy to use uh, journeys for cu- my customers to both onboard them for the first time into the bank and when they are uh, enrolled with the bank how do i make sure that every transaction every relationship that they have with the bank digitally is very very smooth streamlined uh and 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 uh, easy to use and enjoyable i think those are the two spaces where my interaction with my cto is is of high order i think other than that once i understand what is the right proposition to build for my customer what is the right product the proposition is ready the product is ready uh after that it's 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 hardcore marketing which is now find out what are the emotional insights uh, how will you build a campaign uh, which will be be able to drive awareness of your product in a more relevant fashion to your customer what are the choice of channels that you'll use to build awareness to drive conversion uh, and how do you get them to buy the product i think there it is it is hardcore marketing in its in its truest form and i think there you you just have to continue to evolve with understanding of consumers understanding of the channels uh the evolution has to be about understanding where are the consumers today in the past they were only on television to they are not just on television but they are omni channel uh and and how do you then identify how do you reach out with a tailored message which is right for that particular channel uh to your customer so and and drive conversion from there for that i don't discuss with my ct that job i i kind of lead mine i and my team lead that independently 
Now, you know, you've had a quite, uh, I mean, just looking at your recent campaigns, such as Active Money, Quota 811, Smart Choice, Gold Loan campaigns, just want to understand what are the key data points that you track, and if possible, if you could share some of the metrics also achieved. Sure. So, let me start with the, with the Gold Loan uh, campaign. Why Gold Loan is a small business for us, but uh, it's a very important business that we want to scale up uh, aggressively. And for us, the key insight there was the fact that gold loan is effectively uh, one of the cheapest loans that a consumer can take. Uh, but but there is a, a, a bit of an emotional bias or a taboo which prevents the consumer from taking a gold loan in spite of having gold. Just think of it. There's gold in the house. You, know, you don't hardly use it except for certain marriages. Uh, and imagine if rather than keeping it in your house or in your locker, you could keep it with a bank who's safeguarding it. And you could take a loan against that gold at a very, very low rate of interest. Now, that's really the the uh, how the mind looks at why it, it makes sense to take a gold loan more than any other loan because every other loan is more expensive. Uh, but consumers feel that, oh, this is my family heirloom. And, and if I were to mortgage this, it almost means that I've got nothing else in life and therefore I have to kind of mortgage it. And that's the reason Very why true. people will end up taking a more expensive personal loan, which is not secured, rather than having take, rather than taking a secured gold loan at a much lower interest. So that's the behavior we wanted to change. So we got this insight. Once we had this insight, we we built the right campaign. We picked up our two target markets, which are and we did a test pilot there in in Maharashtra and Karnataka, and uh, we've got very strong results. Where after hearing this campaign, we're going at twenty five percent faster than what we were doing before that. So that that's one example. Uh, then uh, for for active money, the insight that we we kind of saw we saw that in spite of interest rates being at the highest in in, in like a decade in India across the world, uh, you still had about sixty thousand crores of of investors' money, depositors' money lying in savings accounts, which could have easily be moved to more high leading assets like fixed deposits uh, or other financial assets. So we try to understand why is this the case, and you know, India kind of comes from a land of uh, most of the people who kind of grown in India were, were never had a lot of money to start off with, and and the worry always was if I would need money urgently and if I put money into a, a kind of a fixed deposit, uh, then I can never take that money out and what will happen for the emergency, and that's why people still keep a lot of lazy money in savings accounts, and we said what happens if you could give them the liquidity of a savings account with the high returns of an FD, and we built this product. Based on this proposition, and we we drove it really hard with the campaign that we made last year in in June. Uh, so we got a lot of love from consumers uh, on that. And the two metrics that we really uh, chase when we run a campaign first is uh, does it build awareness for the brand? And and our spontaneous awareness scores went up from forty last year in 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 May to high of forty seven by the end of the year at highest ever levels uh, that we had ever reached on the brand. And secondly, we had higher trial rates, uh, higher purchase rates of the product, and leading to a doubling of our book on on Actimony in the last twelve months. So those are the metrics we look at in terms of awareness, awareness leading to trial, and trial leading to purchase, and finally market share. So one is an awareness metric, one is a purchase metric. Those are two metrics that we look at for every campaign, and uh, basis that we decide how successful or unsuccessful the campaign has been. You know, when I think of 811 now, obviously I think of Quota, and the other person who I think of is Ranveer Singh. Whenever the word 811 comes out, it's been a long association with Ranveer Singh. How has this, uh, you know, helped the brands? How has he helped build the brand salience? So Ranveer has been an amazing uh, ambassador for the brand. We started uh, with him uh, more than five years back with our uh, first campaign called India Invited. So that was the launch of 811, uh, which happened. And uh, the insight that we really had at that point of time uh, was the fact that a lot of consumers wanted to open a bank account in a private sector bank, which offered them uh, much better service than what was the service levels at that point of time in the country. But the belief was that uh, opening a bank account is very complex. I have to fill a lot of forms. The whole day will go. Uh, 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 I have to put a minimum balance. Uh, and, and and therefore I can't use all of my money uh, for the services I I get, and we were wanting to drive disruption in the industry by bringing for the first time a zero balance account, which uh, you could open uh, you know sitting at your home on your mobile app or on your computer at any point of time in the day, 
so we just and and no complex forms to be filled. It was all digital, and you could do a video KYC after some time. When the video KYC was allowed, you could actually do a video KYC, and and within three minutes, your account would be opened end to end. So that was the proposition that we had to build a disruptive proposition, and we thought at that time that you could either launch it in a very uh, very functional manner, uh, or you could really find a strong visceral emotional insight which could appeal to consumers. And we found a very simple insight: the fact that you know we do not differentiate uh, amongst anyone, and if you're an Indian and you have an Aadhaar card, you're welcome to join. I bank. remember the campaign, the railway platform the one. Railway platform campaign, and it was just based on a very simple insight: if you're an Indian and you have a form, any identity to prove that you're an Indian, you are welcome to join. And with that simple insight, we we built that campaign, and eight one one has been a runaway success. Uh, you know, since then. We've got over two crore customers that we've acquired since then, um, and uh, we, we we did a second campaign after a few years uh, called called Dreams Invited, uh, wherein we spoke about the the aspiring Indian, the dreams of the, those those Indians, and how a Kotak account can actually help uh, achieve those dreams. So that's the second campaign we did, uh, and then we used Ranveer uh, last year for Active Money. So. Ranbir uh, embodies the brand personality. It's a brand for the, the aspirer. It's a brand for the you know the emboldened Indian. Uh, it's 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 a brand which helps you uh, if you have a dream and you need someone to uh, back those dreams. Then then that's the brand. And Ranbir embodies those values. Uh, and yeah, Ranbir helps us to break clutter as well. Uh, so so we we love working with him. Now you hold dual responsibility. In addition to the chief marketing officer hat, you also are the you know you uh, you also manage deposit products and third party products. So what's the challenge in handling this? Is it you know you've got your feet basically in two boats? So how do you manage to ride down the stream? Actually, I I love what I do. It's very complimentary because I I build products. Uh, in the liability space uh, for the bank, and I also then am able to, uh, you know, drive the whole marketing strategy and the marketing campaigns for all the products in the bank. Uh, so, so therefore, I always believe that product and marketing uh, are go side by side, and they're two sides of the same coin. And and uh, what you really done therefore in Kotak is to bring the two together, and and the marketer has a seat at the table while the product is being designed to define what is the con- Marketer is the voice of the consumer, uh, and and therefore being able to build, bring those insights onto the table, saying what are the real pain points and the needs of the consumer, and therefore what are the jobs to be done, how a product can actually answer those jobs to be done, answer meet those needs of the consumers, and and when you bring marketing and product together, you just bring a very very strong insight about consumers, and therefore you're able to build uh, much relevant, much stronger products. And then communicating those products become much more easier. Once you actually have a superior product which is answering a real need of the consumer, then communication becomes that much easier. You can, you know, if you have a great product, uh, and even if you have bad marketing, you can still sell the product. But even if you have a bad product and you can do great marketing, you'll never be able to sell the product. You cannot sell it. So, so therefore, uh, what I like in my role is that I, uh, I'm, I really am able to create products uh, right from the inception and and build the right campaigns to do that. And therefore, I'm deli- responsible for the delivery of the entire PNL of the the liabilities uh, part of the brand. My final question is: uh, Are you looking to up your ad expense this year? And uh, the second part of the question is: Are you seeing, you know, because we spoke so much about AI, technology, martech, performance marketing, is more and more of your budget being skewed towards the tech product part of it, vis-a-vis, say, your uh, traditional media, be it print, uh, television, outdoor. So, uh, as I said, that uh, doing just performance marketing without building sure. top of the tunnel uh, is a very expensive proposition over the long term, and therefore you have to drive the right balance between building brand awareness. If you if if your consumers don't know about the brand when they see a performance marketing ad, unlikely they will put their hard earned money. Into the bank. Remember, we're talking about people's money, and when people think about their yes. money, they think from their heart and not from their mind. And therefore, trust 
and convenience is the number one factor for a person uh, to choose a bank. You need to do above the line advertising to drive brand awareness, brand saliency, and what your proposition is. So we will strike the right balance uh, in how do we really build the awareness spot. And our measure for, for above the line is spontaneous awareness. So we have a target to deliver in our minds where we want to take the brand in terms of its spontaneous awareness. Today we're sitting at 46, 47 level. We want to take it to uh, 60 over the next few years. Uh, and to do that, whatever is the right amount of money we need to spend, we will spend to build the brand awareness and build our brand propositions. And then we'll complement it with money being spent on performance marketing to really convert the consumer through our digital channels. So we will, there'll be certain products, we will spend more money on performance marketing. There'll be certain products, we'll spend more money on building the all their awareness. But overall at a bank's level, we'll get the right balance between building the brand's awareness and converting the consumers through performance marketing. Thank you so much, Rohit. It was a pleasure talking to you. Very, very, and a very, very insightful conversation. Thank you so much. My pleasure, Simran. Have a wonderful day. Take care.